We're live. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Yoga for Your Heart. So I have a couple of uh, things I'd love to introduce the class with as I sort through all the papers that my sister who's practicing at home in the Niagara area says, what's with all the paper? She doesn't ask anymore, she knows. Okay, so when it comes to the heart center, obviously physical matters, but so does our emotional states. Um, but basically from a physical aspect, uh, yoga can obviously reduce our stress levels, just slow us right down. The breathing that we do is key to reducing our stress right in the moment. When you're feeling overstressed or myself, and listen, I have stresses, we all do, you're not gonna avoid it. But knowing how to manage and mitigate is super important because it just is so hard on the heart. The cortisol can create inflammation that narrows the arteries, that creates the hypertension, that can actually lead to, you know, heart attacks. The amygdala is, you know, we talked about yoga for the brain last week. The amygdala is like an almond-shaped little thing, and it's deep inside your brain, but it's the portion of the brain that is trying to process our emotions. And, you know, so we want to be sure that we can consider the cost of not dealing with our stress and maybe having a stroke. Nobody wants to have any of these things. So, you know, yoga, of course, very proactive. And our entire cardiovascular system, from the heart to the arteries to the veins, they're all exposed physiologically to stress, which begs the question, how can Donald Trump still be alive? I mean, you know, his stress levels have to be off the charts, and yet there he is doing what he does. Um, and I often use the expression, and you've heard it before, but that which does not kill us makes us stronger. Maybe, you know? And then I also love what Phyllis Diller said, housework never killed anyone, but why take a chance? <laughs> so it's great that you're here doing yoga instead of housework, all right? So. One of the things that we do physically in uh, yoga is to um, stretch. And when we stretch, we're actually stretching. And so for those of you who've been lying over top of your bolster and your block, it physically stretches the heart area, opens it up, because so much of the time we're hunched over and closed. And you look at some people's body language, you can tell there's a lot of fear. You know, people who sit cross-legged and their arms like this. I've been in therapy sessions with, you know, I, hey, I'm not making them bad or wrong, but, you know, we need to check in with our own bodies and our language that our body is expressing. And just be aware that, you know, when we're not open and lifted in the heart center, maybe our heart health is going to suffer. Maybe our energy levels suffer. Um, maybe we just don't show up fully for life when our hearts are closed or overprotected. Um, so we're going to uh, start on our mats lying down. And I just want you to start out by giving your body a really good stretch by reaching your arms over your head, reaching your feet in the opposite directions, Feel the stretch through the chest, through the shoulders, through the legs, perhaps pointing the feet and flexing the feet. And one more stretch in, let your breath expand. And exhale and relax Just for a moment. Alrighty, so let's now scooch our feet towards, so think about a banana or crescent moon, whichever image works for you. Scooch your, your legs over to the left side of your mat. And then your left hand takes hold of your right wrist. And you're gonna take yourself into that banana or crescent moon shape. Now be careful not to crunch too much. You wanna keep length and opening, but you're just 
turning your body towards the left with the legs and with the arms, stretching and return back to center. And let's stretch lengthwise once again, reaching the arms over above your head, pointing your feet, maybe flexing your feet and release and relax. And now scoot your feet over towards the right side of your mat. Your right hand takes hold of your left wrist and you're reaching now towards the right, bending the body into that crescent moon. Although we have a full moon coming up tomorrow night, hopefully the sky will be clear and breathe. And return to center. And once again, stretching lengthwise with a straight, long, strong body. And then bring your arms up to the ceiling, up towards the sky, and release them down beside your body. And now on an inhaling in place, exhale, draw your right knee up and interlock your fingers two inches below your kneecap. You might want to tuck your shoulder blades underneath your heart center, tilt your chin towards the center of your chest. And then you're going to take, so your right leg is bent. You're going to place your right hand underneath the back of your right thigh. Your left hand is going on top of your left hip bone. Okay, that, that hip bone, your asis joint. And then you're going to take that right bent knee out to the right side. The reason you're keeping your left hand on your left hip is to try to keep your pelvis stable and equal and even. So now you've taken your right knee, bent knee out to the right side. You're going to straighten that leg out to the right side and bend it back and straighten on an inhale and bend back on an exhale. Inhale to straighten, exhale to release. One more time, straighten, exhale, bend, bring the knee back to center, place your left hand on the outside of your right knee and take it across your body over to the left side and extend your right arm out to the right side. Now you can play with this. If you have shoulder issues, and many of us do, um, place your arm wherever it feels comfortable. If it's comfortable at shoulder height, fine. If it feels better to raise it up and over behind your head, that's fine too. Find your comfort zone. And then breathe into that right hip and glute. I know I repeat myself often, but remember the hip is the junk drawer. It gets tight. It's a very stable. It's the largest joint in the body. It needs to be stable because it's supporting us when we're standing, when we're sitting, moving. But it's also a repository for issues that we don't have the time, energy, or wherewithal to process, and it just gets stuffed somewhere in the body, and sometimes that's the hip, the junk drawer. But we can stash stuff in all places of the body, and the beautiful thing about yoga is that we don't even know, need to know what the junk is, what the stuff is, what the issues in the tissues are. In yoga, we're releasing all the time through the breath, through the stretching, through the compressing, and then come back to the center and bring the knee into the chest and then reach your hands up towards your ankle, somewhere between the knee and the ankle, and just pull the leg towards you. Try to keep your shoulder blades on the mat and your head. So rather than reaching your upper body and stressing it out off the floor, keeping the heart chest open, breathing, so important to relaxing that 
big cranial nerve, the vagus nerve. We've been talking about it as well. And then release the leg, bring your arms to your side, keep the leg in the air, lengthen it, and slowly lower it. So that vagus nerve coming from your brain, through your heart center, into your lower abs and your digestive system. Just by deep breathing, we activate and nurture this really important nerve. It's a two-way highway. Inhaling in place, exhale, draw the left knee up and interlock your fingers two inches below your uh, kneecap on your shin. And then we're going to take the left hand and place it behind the knee. So on the back of your thigh, your right hand is going on to your right hip. And then you're taking your left knee bent over to the left side. And on an inhale, extend the leg. And on an exhale, bring it back. Inhaling to extend, exhaling to bend. Why don't you do this on your own breath? Inhaling to expand, and exhaling to bend. And one more time, and then come back into the center and then straighten the leg reaching up between the knee and the ankle and straighten it keeping your shoulders and your head relaxed on the mat And then keeping your legs straight up in the air, you're going to slowly lower your leg back down onto the mat. And draw your knees in towards your chest. We can either rock up to a seated position or you can roll over onto your side and use your top arm to press yourself up. And come on over onto your hands and knees. If you need to, you can either double your mat over if you need extra cushioning for your knees or use uh, whatever you have nearby to make your knees comfortable. Okay, hands are underneath your shoulders. Lengthen your spine. Make sure you're not too crunched up by having your hands too close to your knees. Ideally, your hands are underneath your shoulders. If you have wrist issues, you can always come up onto your knuckles or modify somehow. Your knees are beneath your hips. So we're going to start with um, cow pose. Curl your toes under on an inhale. You're going from neutral to hollowing out your lower back, lifting your heart center, lengthening through your neck, arms are straight, and on an exhale, flatten the tops of your feet and slowly come up into cat. So rounding your back, dropping your tailbone, tucking your chin, Inhaling, curl your toes under. Now think about lengthening the space from your belly button right up to your throat. And on an exhale, round your spine, drop your tail, tuck your chin. Pressing all 10 fingers into the mat will take pressure off the wrists on an inhale, you're lengthening, you're drawing your heart center forward, shoulders back, rounding through the cervical, eyes can be open or closed, rolling up towards your third eye, and exhaling into cat.
Inhaling into cow. Hollow out the lower back. Be sure to lengthen through the chest area. Last time, flatten the tops of your feet, coming into cat. And return to neutral. We're going to do uh, thread the needle. But when we do our twisting up, I want you to think about rather than the arm twisting you up, it's your torso that's taking you up. All right. So take your right arm under your left, reach through as far as you can. And then inhale. The arm is coming under and up, but the torso is leading the way. So you may not even come as far, because sometimes we're just throwing the arm up. Consider the torso here. And exhale, draw the arm back underneath, thread the needle. And then inhaling, consider your torso twisting and the arm just following. So don't worry about how high the arm goes. Exhale, thread the needle. Inhale, reach the arm as you twist the torso. And exhale. This will be the last time you're going to come down and stay in this twisted position releasing your forehead onto the mat, the side of your head. Now, if you need to, you can keep your arm with the, the left arm bent, propping, or you can tippy-toe your fingers of that left arm straight out in front and just try to relax here in thread the needle. So our movements are gently boosting the circulation of the blood. Blood, of course, contains oxygen and nutrients. Every single cell in the body relies on this precious fluid with all of its important contents. And then draw the arm in front, back under your shoulder, and press up into neutral. So now we'll do the other side. You're going to take your left arm, reach it under, and then inhale. Begin to bring the arm back, rotate the core, and let the arm follow and reach up. And you may notice a little more movement on one side from the other. I'm dealing with some shoulder issues on the right side right now. So I notice I have more freedom in the left side. And then reaching under and pressing to twist the torso, reach the arm, exhale. As we practice yoga, we can think of it as a way of getting to know our bodies better. See what's really going on. Inhale, stretching, twisting, reaching. Exhale, thread the needle. Last time, inhale, expanding, stretching and reaching. And last time, exhale, thread the needle. And this is where if you're able to release the side of your head, and your shoulder onto the mat. Now you have cushions, you have blocks if you need to support. Please use them. And then tippy toe the fingers of the other arm straight out in front. And draw the arm in front, back, and press up. And then take your knees wide apart. Big toes are touching. Flatten the tops of your feet. I'm going to come into a modified child's pose. 
Slowly take your hips back towards your heels. And again, use your props if you feel that you want to rest your forehead by adding height with a prop, a cushion or a block, or fold your arms, creating a pillow. But if your forehead is comfortable, place it on the mat. And breathe. Remember, more than 60% of the capacity of your lung expansion is taking place in the side and back ribs. So notice as you breathe in child's pose, the expansion of the rib cage, the stretching of the intercostal muscles, it goes without saying, the more deeply we breathe, the more energy we have, and the more deeply we exhale, reduces the amount of waste and toxins and impurities that are being released through our breath. Inhaling, come on up. You're back on your knees. Now take your right foot forward. You can curl your back toes under. Inhale, sweep the arms up. Your right hand, maybe give it a shake so you know which one it is, takes hold of your left wrist. And yes, if you have shoulder issues, be mindful. In fact, please always be mindful. Okay, and modify. And now pull over to the right side. So all this stretching strengthens the blood, it boosts the circulation, and it's doing a whole lot more. Let's face it, we can feel it in our front thigh. And release. And now bring your fingertips down to the mat. And if you have two blocks, you might want to place them underneath your hands. And then just lift your back knee off the floor. So if you have blocks, you can use them at whatever height you like. Stretching and pressing through the heel of the back foot. Or your fingertips just tented on the floor, reaching your heart center forward. And then bring your knee back down onto the mat. Keep your left fingertips on the mat. Inhale, sweep the right arm up. Reaching up and stretching up. Exhale, float it down. Take the right leg back and let's bring the left foot forward, keeping the knee bent. Inhale, sweep the arms up. Now you can wiggle the fingers of the left hand, take hold of the right wrist, and reach over to the left side. So you're reaching towards the bent knee side. And come on back up. Float your arms down, tent your fingers on the mat, curl your back toes under, coming into a low lunge, lifting up through the heart center. Try to keep your neck in line with your spine so your head's not hanging, nor is it pitching up. You're reaching through the crown of your head. And release the knee, back knee onto the floor. Keep your right fingers tented on the floor. Inhale, sweep the left arm up, reaching up, stretching up. Remember when we're in any kind of a balanced posture, our tiny little stabilizing muscles get to work. And bring that hand back and take your left leg back and then curl back. Oh, let's do a little toe stretch because we love it. Our toes are going to be stuffed inside of shoes and boots now, unless you're taking off somewhere warm, and I know some of you are, but some of us aren't. I actually bought a pair of boots yesterday. It said size 11, but I said, there's no way they're an 11. They had the wrong size on them. I mean, <laughs> I've always had big feet, but I'm not an 11. 
<laughs> okay, so roll back onto the soles of your feet and just spend a moment here in Uttanasana. So last week we talked about the brain and yoga. The week before was digestion and yoga. We're still paying attention to all of these things, but this reversal of the blood flow, obviously um, our inversions change the circulation of the blood flow where we have now 75% of the blood is going above the heart. Typically, it doesn't, it, we don't get that much blood up high when we're standing or just sitting. Okay, softly bend the knees, inhale, sweep the arms up and overhead, bring your hands into prayer, exhale into Anjali Mudra, shoulders down. Just close your eyes for a moment and breathe. And then release your arms. Give your legs a good shake out. How are we doing for heat here? Is it getting, should I back it off a bit or are we good? What, who, anybody want me to back it off? Nope, okay, cool. All right, or hot or something. All right, so Tadasana. Let's have our feet um, about a fist width apart. Lift your toes off the floor. Feel your big toe mount, your baby toe mount in the center front of your heel. And then just lay your toes down. Lifting up on your kneecaps engages your thighs. When your thighs engage, it has this ability of bringing your pelvis, hopefully, into neutral, into balance. So you've got your anterior superior iliac joints, front and back, and your posterior iliac joint, so that's that little dimple in, if you have one in your back, and then you can feel the bone in the front. So rather than the pelvis spill, spilling forward and having lordosis or kyphosis, we want, can I make up a new word? <laughs> Perfectionosis? How about just good balanceosis? Okay, so lifting the sternum away from the pelvic floor, Shoulders up to the ears, exhale, roll them back and pull your armpits down. Gives you a longer neck. Let your chin float horizontal, parallel to the floor and reach up through the crown of your head, axial extension. And then inhale, sweep the arms up and overhead. Now, interlock your fingers, but release your pointer. Inhaling in place. Exhale, let's bend to the right. Keep the length, keep the length, keep the length. Inhale, straight up. Exhale, keep the length, keep the length. If you can straighten your arms, if you can't, it's okay. And then one more time, back up. And now let your head fall back. Reach your arms back. And then release your hands. Inhale, straighten up. Exhale, reach forward. Forward fold. Let your fingertips touch the floor. So if you need to, you're bending your legs. But if not, perhaps your legs are straight. Bring your weight a little bit forward into the balls of your feet as opposed to being back in your heels. And on an inhale, come halfway up. Place your hands on the front of your shins and lengthen your spine. Reaching from tailbone, a line of energy right through the crown of your head. You may be feeling your hamstrings firing, literally and figuratively. These guys get so tight from sitting and just not being stretched in general. Exhale, forward fold. Now we're gonna come into chair pose. So you're gonna bend your knees and you're gonna put your weight back towards your heels. Knees are bent and as if you were sitting on a chair, you're gonna inhale and reach the arms forward. So this definitely boosts circulation. It's activating your heart center. You can keep your arms at shoulder height or you can reach them up by your ears. And then exhale, forward fold. Let your heads hang. Please let your heads hang. Give your head a swing. Inhale, come halfway up, placing your hands on your shins and lengthening your spine. 
Exhale, forward fold, let your head hang, bend your knees, inhale, sweep the arms up. Now in chair pose, you should see your toes in front of your knees. Sometimes our knees are too far forward. Head back, so at least you can see your toes, breathing, lengthening through your spine. Yes, this activates your cardiovascular. Inhale, sweep up. Exhale, float your arms down. Okay, if you need to, take a sip of water. We're going to do our sun salutations. And we'll do them not fast and not slow, moderate. But I want you to pay attention to your downward facing dog, which bursts circulation, and our cobra posture, which opens up the heart chest center. Inhaling in place, exhale, hands in prayer. Step your feet apart, arms up, reach up, look up. Pay attention to that thoracic spine so that you're not arcing back so far that you can't open that back spine. And then inhale, bring your feet back towards one another, lift out of your waist, exhale, reach forward. Please let your heads hang, fingertips touch the floor. Take your left leg back and drop the knee onto the mat. Bring your hands onto your front right thigh. Keep your shoulders back and you're gonna keep your shoulders over your hips. We're not gonna lean forward. And then focus your gaze for balance. Lift your back knee off the floor, press through your back heel. Inhale, sweep the arms up. If you're wobbling, that's just your stabilizing muscles at work. Of course, our large skeletal muscles are working as well and joints are being lubricated. So much, there's just so much that's good about yoga. It's, it's, a, it's an incredible physical discipline and culture and science that we're so lucky to have. Now, let's come forward into whatever version of plank posture works for you today. It may be your knees on the floor with your heels uh, or your ankles crossed. And of course, you can take the pressure off your shoulders by coming back a bit. If you're in your full plank position, have a look at the wrinkles in your wrists are aligning with the front of your mat. Shoulders draw back, reach through the crown of your head, press through your heels, and imagine a zipper from your pelvis to your sternum, zip it up. So your core is engaged. And then release your knees Flatten the tops of your feet so your toes point backwards. Leave your hands where they are and slowly take your hips back towards your heels. And enjoy the spinal stretch. Shoulders, arms, and wrists. <sighs> Leaving your hands where they are Come slowly forward, keeping your upper body as low as you can. Now, for those of us with rounded backs and stiff shoulders, this is a great antidote to reversing some of the mm, less than great posture or aging that can take place in our spines. So I know how awkward it can feel. Your bum stays in the air. Slide everything behind you. Draw your fingertips back to align with the tops of your shoulders. Release your forehead onto the mat. Flatten the tops of your feet. Toes are pointing backwards. Elbows into your rib cage. Press your forearms down towards the floor. Pressing the tops of your feet and your thighs, your hips and your pelvis into the mat. Roll an invisible alley with your nose. And on an inhale, let's lift up into baby cobra. Baby Bhujangasana, lifting your hearts. Maybe next week. Oh, I always get my inspiration for the next week when I'm working through this class. And I'm thinking about our adrenals and our kidneys. 
Adrenals are our stress glands. Kidneys are purifying fluid. They work so hard 24 seven. They never go on strike, we hope. Okay, one more breath in to lift. Exhale, lengthen and lower. Curl your toes under. You can come up onto your knees first or you can press up into your downward facing dog. Walk your feet a few inches forward. Bend your knees. Please press your belly onto your thighs as you press your sits bones towards the back of the mat. You, your knees aren't straight yet, or your legs aren't straight. You're releasing your ears between your inner arms. Your chest is reaching for your knees. <clears throat> and now you could press your heels towards the floor. <clears throat> I've had my first cold of the season, so I consider that activating my immune system. All the little soldiers have been working hard to try to push everything out. It's been interesting. Alrighty, so this is definitely a blood boosting circulation posture, downward facing dog. It's hugely energizing. Relax your neck, lift your leg up in the air, your left leg, left leg up. Look at your left hand and swing that foot as far forward as you can. Other leg forward, and then let your upper body just hang in Uttanasana, standing forward, bend and breathe. Bring your arms beside your ears. Engage your thighs by lifting up on your kneecaps. Pull your bellies into your lower back and sweep the arms in front, reaching up, feet apart for balance, look up, arc back, opening your heart. Inhale, bring your feet back together, lift up out of your waist. Exhale, reach forward as you hinge from your hips. Bend your knees, sweep the arms out to the side, reaching up, hands in prayer. Exhale, Anjali Mudra. Okay, one more round. Inhaling in place. Exhale, hands in prayer. Step your feet apart. Arms up, reach up, look up, arc back, open up. Inhale, bring your feet back together. Lift up out of your waist. Hinge from your hips. You're reaching forward as you fold. Please let your heads hang. Step your right leg back and drop your knee to the mat. Bring your hands onto your front left thigh. Focus your gaze, curl your back toes under, and then press through your back heel. This anchors your posture. Inhale and sweep the arms up. Fingers are active. Look at the floor if you need help with your balance. And breathe. Balancing is calming for the mind because it makes the mind focus. Turn your hands forward, bring them onto the mat, and please come into your version of plank pose that's perfect for you today. Reaching through the crown of your head, pressing through your heels, zipping up from your pelvis to your sternum, but breathe. Remember your neck is part of your spine. Think of your body as a strong two by four. Release your knees, flatten the tops of your feet, take your hips back towards your heels and enjoy the release and the stretch through the spine, shoulders, upper back, your wrists and your arms. Just breathe here. And then leaving your hands where they are, release your forearms and elbows towards the floor, keeping your bum in the air and keeping your torso nice and low. When you're able, release your chest and your chin onto the mat.
This is probably the greatest posture for maintaining flexibility and suppleness in your spine. Slide everything out behind you. Draw your fingertips back to align with the tops of your shoulders. Release your forehead onto the mat. Take your feet perhaps wider if you're considering the fuller expression of cobra and roll your baby toes, pressing them into your mat. Pressing the tops of your feet, your thighs, your hips and your pelvis into the mat. Roll an invisible alley with your nose. On an inhale, let's everyone come up into baby cobra. Some of us will just stay here. Those of us who wish, press the floor away from you. Do not let your elbows wing out. Please don't let your shoulders come up to your ears. Keep a bend in your elbows. Visualize a beautiful curve of your spine with your eyes rolling up towards Ajna Chakra, your third eye, your seat of intuition. One more breath in. Exhale, lengthen and lower. If your feet were separated, bring them back towards one another. Curl your toes under. Pressing in with your hands, lift your hips up. Walk your feet a few inches forward. And then bend your knees. Press your belly onto your thighs, your chest towards your knees. Have your ears inside of your arms. And then press your heels towards the floor with your sits bones pressing towards the back of your mat. You're in an inverted V position, receiving earth to luric energy through your hands and the soles of your feet and blood being circulated very well throughout your entire body. Lift your right leg up in the air, look at your right hand, swing that foot as far forward as you can, other foot forward, and then just let your upper body hang. Uttanasana, standing forward bend, give your head a little bit of a shake so you know you're not holding at your neck and that your weight of your head can stretch out your cervical vertebra. Engage your thighs by lifting up on your kneecaps. Pull your bellies in towards your lower spine, arms beside your ears. Inhale, sweep the arms in front, reaching up, feet apart for balance. Look up and arc back. And then inhale, bring your feet back together. Lift up out of your waist, hinge from your hips forward. Bend your knees, inhale, sweep the arms up and overhead, hands in prayer, exhale, Anjali Mudra. Have a sip of water if you like, and then bring yourself down onto your mats for Shavasana, just for a couple of moments, to allow your body to gather the energy, to absorb the benefits of what you have just done. Have it integrated. If it's comfortable, bring your arms off to the side, far enough away from your body so that your shoulders are relaxed on the floor, palms are facing up in the open and receiving position to open the chest. And just allow your breath to normalize. So when it comes to heart-healthy foods, when we consider the spiritual color of anahata, the heart chakra, it's green. I know in some places they'll say it's pink, um, but green leafy vegetables, super for your heart. Actually, they're good for everything. Also, oatmeal, it's a bunny cereal. We're getting into that season of eating oatmeal. Broccoli, carrots, brown rice, fruits, apples, bananas, and oranges. It 
So breathing through your nose, as long as it's not plugged, to purify, warm, and moisten the air that's going into your lungs. It's gentler on your lungs. And if you wish, you can exhale through your mouth or through your nose. And just a reminder again, if you're able to increase the length of your exhalation, you will activate your vagus nerve, which activates your parasympathetic nervous system, which is the aspect of your nervous system that is involved with rest and digest of healing, restoring, and balancing the body, the mind, and the spirit. Such a simple thing that we can do for ourselves to calm and bring greater healing to all aspects of body and mind, just using the breath. And we're going to come back up to a seated posture and practice our forward seated bend. So either placing your hands underneath the backs of your knees, rocking up or rolling over onto your side, whichever is comfortable. And then pull the flesh out from underneath your sits bones, your ischial tuberosities. In fact, when we're sitting, we should really be aware that we're actually balancing on our sits bones. If we're not, the heart is closed. No, there's so many things I could, you know, talk about just in one posture. So pull the flesh away, flex your feet, activate your thighs, inhale, sweep the arms up. Every time we reach up, we activate the heart and then exhale forward fold. Now, don't worry how far you go. In fact, just maybe try to reach halfway at this point. Try to keep your spine nice and long from your tailbone right through the crown. Keep your feet flexed. They'll be closer to you if you, when we try to take hold of them. One more breath in. Now reach, reach, reach. Lengthen your spine. Exhale and lower your hands, taking hold of whatever you can, whether it's your toes, your feet, your ankles, your calves. And then on an inhale, use whatever you're holding on to as leverage and lift your hearts. Rather than round your back, lifting the hearts, bringing the shoulders back. Yeah, this fires your hamstrings. It's stretching the kidneys, the adrenals. But what forward bends do? They start to quiet the mind. One more breath in, and on your next exhale, bringing your torso, whatever amount you can, closer to your thighs. It doesn't matter how much. It doesn't even matter if it's just a thought or an idea. Everything begins with a thought. And then walk your hands back up. Here comes the sun. Fold your legs over to the side. Curl your toes under. Roll back onto the soles of your feet. Walk your fingertips back towards your feet. Keep your knees soft. Let your heads hang. We're going to slowly roll up one vertebra at a time. Keep your chin tucked into your chest. You're stacking. And then let your head be the last thing to come up. And we're just going to do a little bit of a vinyasa. So coming up to the fronts of your mats, we're going to come into warrior two. So step your right leg back about one leg length. And let's get our alignment just right. Your front foot, left foot's 90 degrees forward, your back foot about 60 degrees forward. And there's a straight line through the heel of your front foot 
towards the arch of your back foot, all right? And then lift up at your sternum, bend that front knee, have a look that you see your big toe inside of your knee, otherwise you're collapsing, losing your alignment, press into the outside of your back foot, all right? So your front leg is bent, back leg is straight, inhale, sweep the arms up to shoulder height, exhale, lower your shoulders, fix your gaze over your front fingertips, inhale to stretch, Exhaling here. Now on an inhale, you're gonna turn your palms up. You're gonna straighten your front leg and reach your arms up and overhead, bring them together. Exhale, turn the palms down, bend your knee, come back into warrior two. Turn your palms up, inhale, sweeping up. Turn the palms down, exhale into warrior two. Inhale, straighten that front leg, reaching up. Exhale, warrior two. Inhale, straighten your front leg, and then turn sideways on your mat and turn your feet just slightly out. Hinge from your hips. Flatten your, lengthen your spine. Tent your fingers on the floor. On an inhale, you're gonna reach your left arm up, reaching up, stretching up, maybe looking up. Exhale, float the arm down. On an inhale, sweep the other arm up. On an exhale, float the arm down. And just to change the scenery, you're gonna take your right foot and point it 90 degrees forward. So we're gonna do the same thing again with our warrior two. Have a look that your front foot is 90 degrees, your back foot's about 60 degrees pointing forward, heel is lining up through the arch of the back foot. You're gonna windmill your arms and come on up into warrior two. Now, make sure that your torso's not leaning forward, that you've got a plumb line through the crown of your head, coming right through the center of your body. Lower your shoulders, breathe. On an inhale, turn the palms up, straighten your front leg, reach your arms overhead. On an exhale, turn the palms down, bend your front knee, come back into warrior two. On an inhale, palms facing up, bringing them overhead. Exhale, bend your front knee, coming back into warrior two, palms are down. Inhale, straighten your front leg, palms together. Exhale, shh, there's a squirrel looking in the window. Oh, inhale, I'm a squirrel lady. <laughs> Exhale, <laughs> that's so cute. Okay, inhale, come back to center. Once again, turn your feet out. On an inhale, you're gonna bring your fingertips to the floor. This time we're gonna lunge over to the left, bringing bum close to heel. Inhale, up into the center. Exhale, lunging over to the other side. One more time, inhale, exhale, lunging as much as you can, stretching your inner thigh, adductor muscles. Exhale, over to the other side. And we're gonna come up and we're gonna do one more posture. So walk your feet in towards one another. Keep your knees bent. You're gonna slowly roll up. Keep your chin tucked into your chest. Let it be the last thing to come up. So in honor of that beautiful crescent moon that we've been enjoying in the sky, take, if you have a block, I'm just drawing this here. I don't even really need something. Put something at the front of your mat. So Ardha Chandrasana, it is a balanced posture. You can stop at any point. So a block would be the right thing. I just don't have a block and I don't, but, and your block can be at any height. Remember that block has three different heights. So crescent moon, I'll just show you quickly. We go from our uh, trikonasana. You bend your front knee, you shift your weight onto your front leg. You place your hands on your block or just on the floor. And then you lift your back leg up all right, into a balanced posture. And if you really wanna go for the balance, you just balance on your foot. Now that's 
going to be extreme for a lot of people. So take it to whatever level you can. Obviously, it's going to work your heart. And then you get to lay down and play dead. Okay, so coming up to the front of your mat, step your right leg back, left leg is forward. Keep your legs straight for now. Inhale, arms up to shoulder height. Now, bend your front knee. Start to transfer your weight by scooching your back leg forward. And then placing your fingertips onto your block or the floor. You can keep your back hand on your hip and you can stay there. Again, depending on how your shoulders are feeling. Or you can lift your top arm. And then if you want, you can lift your bottom hand off the floor. Or keep your fingertips on the floor. Ardha Chandrasana, crescent moon. And then bend your front leg, step your leg back. Come on back into your trikonasana, partly. And then give your legs a shake out. And let's see what happens on the other side. So this time, step your left leg back, one leg length. Lift up at your sternum. Make sure the heel of your front foot is creating a straight line through that back arch. Inhale, sweep the arms up to shoulder height. Bend your front knee. Transfer your weight onto that front leg. Take your back arm and just place it on your hip. Lower your front arm so your fingertips are tented on the floor. Take your time to raise your back leg. Right angles to the leg on the floor. And then if it feels okay, lift your top arm up. And perhaps if you want to try taking your bottom hand off the floor. But again, that's more advanced. Bend your front leg, extend the other leg back, and walk your feet in together. Smile and lie down. Good work, everybody. Take a sip of water if you need. If you didn't get an eye cushion pad and you'd like one or you have something to cover your eyes with, it's always helpful to return our focus inwards. Most of our life, our focus is outwards, and we're, I can't think of the quote right now, um, but the world within is worth exploring, dare I say, It's not only worth it, it's important, and it can reveal many interesting aspirations. It might help us release pain. Eyes are closed. Let your eyeballs sink into their sockets. Separate the biting surfaces of the teeth. Relax the jaw. And let your bodies be soft and heavy. So although we focused on the physical aspects more than the esoteric, emotional, psychological aspects of the heart. The heart represents our ability, of course, to love, to forgive, to be generous. And I like this quote from Nelson Mandela. And he has to know a thing or two, had to have known a thing or two about forgiveness. He said, not to forgive is drinking poison and waiting for your enemies to die.
So as you breathe, visualize your heart expanding. You might even visualize yourself as a five-year-old. A little kid full of curiosity who just wanted to play, have fun, and bask in all the love of being alive. We have that opportunity whenever we choose to remind ourselves that inside of us is a little kid that just wants to have fun, give love, and receive love. And maybe one of the greatest gifts of being five or four or three was we didn't care what our hair looked like. (laughs) My mother used to give me perms. They were horrible. I don't think I really cared what my hair looked like. I just didn't like sleeping in rollers. (laughs) So to find the joy every day is something that will strengthen and keep our hearts beating somewhere between 60 and 100 is a perfect resting rate. And of course, practicing yoga. Inhaling love into your heart center. Exhaling any kind of stress, worry or fear. Inhaling love. Exhaling anything that isn't love. One more breath in, stretch your arms over behind your head, stretching your heart center, reaching, point feet far, flex and point, and drop your arms down by your sides. Take your time to roll over onto your side. Maybe using your bottom arm as a pillow, bending your knees. And when you're ready, press yourself back up into a seated position. And of course, chanting Aum isn't just a spiritual thing. It calms and centers and brings all kind of energy into the throat and the heart center. So if you wish, join me in chanting Aum once, inhaling together. Om Shanti, peace, namaste.